something that is challenging often to Western mindset people is this whole idea of prayer. Because often we want to do something. We want to take some action. We want to redirect something that's happened or change it in some way to make it conformable to what we can see as opposed to asking God what He can see. Because prayer is so important, there's a huge gap, it seems, in our fundamental Christian expression and worship that we don't pause in the midst of our worship for the Lord to speak. You see, when I was in the Jesus movement in the early days, we used to have afterglows, and sometimes even during worship, we would take the time to wait on the Lord. We would pray during worship. We would lift up the people that were there, as well as some of the concerns. And It wasn't a question of having to wait and see if somebody would dare to open their mouth, but rather it was just a time of intimacy and caring. And I think for myself, as I've read the devotional this morning and as I'm sharing it with you, I think I've gotten away from it, and maybe you have too, that we're not taking the time <clears throat> and we're not making the time to spend more actual quiet reflection upon the nature of God and the aspect of sitting at His feet in prayer than we are about hurry up and get things done so that we can move on to the next thing on our list of things to do. I think part of our failure in a country, in this country that we live in, is that whole idea that we haven't prayed through what we have said to do to everyone around us. We haven't stopped long enough to pray first, but we've chosen to do as quickly as we can something about it. As I meditate on the Lord and think about what He said, you know, He spent much time in the early hours really quietly before His God, knowing the Father in an intimate way and discussing with Him the things that He was going to do that day and to share. And the reality of our life needs to reflect that, that we need to be more Daniel-like in taking time, or more, if I dare say it, more like those that are in Islam, the Muslim, who will pray three, four, five, six times a day. Ought we not to be likewise so minded about our God that we choose to take some time to commit to the Lord our ways, to allow Him to speak to us in His way, and maybe just to wait on Him so that He can get done what He wants to do as opposed to what we want to accomplish. In Tozer, everyone must pray as if he alone could pray. As he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18.1 Thomas Akempis wrote that the man of God ought to be more at home in his prayer chamber than before the public. It is not too much to say that the preacher who loves to be before the public is hardly prepared spiritually to be before them. Right praying may easily make a man hesitant to appear before an audience. The man who is really at home in the presence of God will find himself caught in a kind of inward contradiction. He is likely to feel his responsibility so keenly that he would rather do almost anything than face an audience. And yet, the pressure upon his spirit may be so great that wild horses could not drag him away from his pulpit. No man should stand before an audience who has not first stood before God. Many hours of communion should precede one hour in the pulpit. The prayer chamber should be more familiar than the public platform. Schools teach everything about preaching except the most important part, praying. The best any school can do is to recommend prayer and exhort to its practice. Praying itself must be the work of the individual. That 
it is the one religious work which gets done with the least enthusiasm cannot be one of the tragedies of our times. In other words, this can't be one of the worst things that we do, but it should be the best. In true prayer, every man must be an original, for true prayer cannot be initiated nor can it be learned from someone else. Everyone must pray as if he alone could pray. And I think that's why I try to encourage my wife to pray so often and other people because it's easy to pray in style or in form. It's easy to flow with some thoughts that you have. It's easy to preach in prayer. It's easy to teach in prayer. In other words, it's easy to preach in your prayer. In other words, while you're praying, you're preaching to people that are listening. You're not really talking to God. It's easy to teach in prayer as though you're teaching the people that are listening. You're not really praying. And I hear that a lot in beautiful prayers, but I also recognize at times it's more public exhortation than it is and declaration than it is a prayer to God. But even in that, God would rather have us to even repeat prayers if we can't pray so that we could get to the place where we do pray more often. Because frankly, I don't think all the problems that we have in the world really amount to anything so much as the biggest problem we have in the world is the lack of prayer. I know Andrew Murray wrote a lot of books on prayer. I mean, I used to see him all over the place, and I think that might be part of the problem of this last generation, is we take for granted an attitude of prayer, but are we devoting that time to walk in that attitude of prayer, to be aware all the time that we're walking and talking and looking and listening? Are we mindful of our Father? Do we think about what Jesus said? During these seasons that you go through, as I do, take more time to be quiet before your God and listen to Him and let Him teach you how you should pray for yourself in your personal prayer time so that you don't get caught up into anybody else's idea of what you should do or how you normally do when you're in a body of believers and church people around. But be real with your God in some way so that He can be real with you. And you could be aware of a hummingbird come by or a bird. You could be aware of a breeze or just the whisper on the wind of a gentle name being called like your own. But I think that in conversation and prayer, more so, God wants to now whisper to us than shout. And I think he wants to discuss with us what we're doing and show us in his love and mercy a better way to go, a more gentle way to be than we've ever thought of before. And I feel as though God is really reaching out in some ways to mellow us out to bring us down from the height and to give us that peace because the world is getting wound up and wild about all the things that they're consumed with, whether it be politics or economy or jobs or all these aggravations and anxieties that come upon the world regularly. For me, my father, I think he just wants to bless me. I think he just wants to bless you. I think we just need to talk to him about it and spend some quiet time, some prayer time, regularly, to just sit back, look up, give thanks, praise the Lord, and recognize that we're loved. Just that. When you pray, you should feel loved. I hope you go and try that right now. That you would go away from the computer and away from the distractions and somehow get someplace quiet 
And just think about God for a few minutes, your Father, and see if you don't feel loved. I know I do.